from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Hello, I'm Roger Charlton, and welcome to the latest Ropecast. And I am delighted today to welcome back an old colleague, I mean a former colleague, uh, I'm old. fresh from the United States. <laughs> Very glad to have you here, Ginny. <laughs> well, it's good to be here. Yeah. And between leaving Germany and coming back now, um, among other things, you've lived in China. And I think since we have more and more Chinese people here on campus as professors, as researchers and so on, or our students, it would be really helpful for people here if you could give us a few tips about how to make Chinese people feel welcome from the beginning here in Germany, since you've lived in both countries. I know that's quite a task, but let's see what tips you can give. All right, it is a task. Um, Chinese people are wonderful. They're like Americans, but better. <laughs> I, mean, I say that in the sense that they're like Americans because they're open-minded, they're positive, they're very, very positive, optimistic people. They have a good situation in their country right now, so I think that they're just a lot of fun to be around. For Chinese people coming to Europe and the United States to study right now, it's a wonderful opportunity. They they're, know that they're fortunate to have this opportunity. They want to take advantage of that as much as they can. Do you think they are prepared at all for the situation, say, in Europe before they come? They're a little bit like I am. They're, they're optimistic and they, they think only positive things are going to happen. They don't worry about the negative things. So I think one thing that I could recommend that would be helpful is to keep in mind the concept of filial piety. A lot of times when we think about filial piety, we think about this respect for elders. Uh, the children respect their parents. They don't question their authority. And Chinese people respect their government and they don't question their authority. But what we have to remember is that's reciprocal. When people respect the government, when children respect their parents, and when students respect their professors, that's reciprocal in the sense that a student expects the professor to take care of them. Yeah. That um, if this if the student is obedient and does what the professor asks, then the professor will make sure that he or she gives that student the information that they need to be successful on the test, to be successful in life, that the, the professor will give the students the information they need to study for the test. And I think this is, can cause problems sometimes because in the West we put more emphasis on critical thinking, on original thinking, whereas in, in China and other Asian countries there's a lot more emphasis put on rote learning, on just memorizing what the professor tells the student. Mm -hmm. And so this this idea here of, of filial piety can break down because right. the present the, the professors don't always and the lecturers don't always give the students exactly what they need, but they give them some information and then expect the students to extrapolate to bring their own critical thinking to the table to create something that's interesting. And they, this is where the students are just lacking in, in that. Another thing I think is that um, in, in China, people don't criticize the government as much because they expect the government knows what it's doing. And, and right now, the, the, the Chinese government is doing wonderful things, really developing the country. So when Europeans and Americans really openly criticize our government, and we say things that don't sound very flattering. Chinese might be a little surprised, and they might not say exactly those same things. I think uh, picking up your first point um, is often hard even for German students when they come from school to university. Uh, they don't really get the kind of tutorial assistance that perhaps they expect and certainly would need in many cases. So that would be all the more serious with somebody from, from Asia, probably, where it's really a cultural expectation that there will be the help offered to them. So maybe it's not just a matter of individual to individual, but also the university as an institution might need to think about how, how the system could be modified to take account of this kind of cultural difference. 
That's a really good point, Roger. In fact, we just talked about that at lunch, this idea of offering a learning center to help students to uh, get extra help that the professors might not think to provide students with. Yeah, of course, it's also a matter of priorities. Professors, their prestige, their finance to a, a high degree comes from the research and the publications. And unfortunately, the teaching side really brings no credit with it at all for, for the professors, for other instructors on the whole. I mean, there are some exceptions, but mostly it is like that. All of the credit comes from what you do when you're not teaching. When you're not teaching, exactly. And these Chinese students are going to become researchers, and they're, they're going to become professors themselves. And so they are keen to learn this, this system, but they do need some guidance at yeah. the beginning. And I think that the more we can take them aside and say, this is the way that it's done, uh, the, the more they'll appreciate that, and the, that will help them to be successful sooner rather than later. Right. Well, thank you very much for that. You're welcome. I'm sure we're going to uh, continue talk about China, but uh, that's it for today. I think. Okay. Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.